All right. So good evening, everyone. Good evening to our speakers for to for this evening. We welcome you to our seminar on evidence-based guidance services in the Philippines, utilizing research in improving the field. So before we officially open our program, let us all give respect to our flag and to our country by singing the Philippine National Anthem. for a while. Just for a while. Um. I think I'm having a little difficulty right now. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm, I'm having a real uh, technical difficulty. Because of the signal, probably. Can you hear it, Bob? Yan po, meron na pong sounds. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
out for an invocation. Jesus, as we enter this training hall, you bring your presence with us. You speak your peace, your grace, and your perfect order into the atmosphere of this room. We acknowledge your Lordship over all that we will be spoken, thought, decided, and accomplished within this day. Lord Jesus, for the gifts you have given to each one of us. We do not take them lightly, but we commit in using them responsibly and well. Give us a fresh supply of truth and beauty to which we draw our strength in doing our job. Anoint our creativity, our ideas, and our energy so that we can use the rest of us. Good evening, everyone. I'm very sorry for the sound and the technicalities. Siguro po dahil tayo nasa new normal na naglalag na rin po yung ating mga computers. And pardon me po for the short delay. But anyway, I am very, I'm both privileged and honored to be here with you and to be your host for tonight's activity. Okay, so we had our... Um, opening prayer and our, of course, salutation to our flag. And now let us all have uh, our ears opened and uh, let's listen to the welcome remarks of the head research consultant or the head research consultant of EdCore Educational Research Center. He's none other than Dr. Richard Sanchez. Good evening, sir. Good evening, po. Uh, maraming salamat, po, Ma'am Elaine. Uh, good evening, po, sa ating mga 
uh, lectures for tonight. Uh, Dr. Bernadette Leharde, maraming salamat po. And of course, our colleague from the Pampanga High School, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Abad Santos. And uh, to all of you po na nandito ngayon, some of our colleagues sa uh, EDCOR Educational Research Center, ay uh, nandito rin sila. And we are also expecting others pa na makasama po. Unang-una po, maraming salamat po sa uh, pagdalo nyo dito sa uh, event na ito. Uh, yung pong iba nagtatanong sila uh, ed research uh, this is a, this is an educational research center and then uh, why are we here tayong mga kayo po na, na nas into guidance and counseling mga guidance advocates kasi po yun nga ang isa po sa mga advocacy ng uh, ng Edcore Educational Research Center ay pasuki ng pwede niyang pasukin when it comes to research yung uh, makatulong siya when it comes to research. Makikita po natin sa pamamagitan ng lectures ni Sir Kiel Abad Santos at ni Mama, ni Dr. Bernadette Lijarde kung paano pong napakahalaga ng research, napakahalaga ng pananaliksik sa guidance and counseling. Kaya nga po sa kapag uh, natutunan mong uh, gamitin ang research, natutunan mong gamitin ang pananaliksik sa iyong trabaho bilang isang guidance advocate, guidance counselor, Uh, naniniwala po ako na hindi hindi ka ma malilid sa sa maling daan when you use research in your job. So I formally welcome you po dito sa ating uh, event na ito at uh, sana po ay marami kayong matutunan at uh, ma-inspire kayo ng ating mga lectures sa gabing ito. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, sir. I, for one, is very much excited to listen to our speakers for tonight. Dahil po, ako rin po ay isang career guidance designee at ako po ay kumaga sa pagkain ay natatakam kung ano po ang ating maririnig ngayong gabi. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our first speaker for this evening. So, our first speaker uh, attained his Bachelor of Arts in Industrial Psychology in 1994 at the College of Arts and Sciences at the Holy Angel, Holy Angel University. So he, he had his professional education in 2004 uh, in the same um, university. Also, he had his biblical studies and pastoral ministries in 2000 at CEMI International Bible Seminary. Also, he had his Master of Arts in Guidance and Counseling in 2015 at the same university. In 1994 to 2002, he worked as a human resource officer at the Mecca Manufacturing Philippines Incorporated at Clark Special Economic Zone, Pampanga. In 2002 to 2011, he worked as a teacher in English and Christian education and a guidance coordinator in the high school department of Proverbsville School Incorporated at Greenwoods Country Homes, Sitio San Pablo, Telebastagan in San Fernando. Also, he was a part-time instructor of Charismatic Ecumenical Ministries International, uh, or CEMI, in the International Bible Seminary at the Villa Dolores Angeles City. In 2011 to 2015, he was a secondary school teacher three of values education in the values education department of Pampanga High School. On August 17, 2015, he was designated in the exigency of the service as OIC assistant school head of Baliti Integrated School by the school's division superintendent of DEPED City of San Fernando, Pampanga with the task of instructional supervision. In June 2016 to present, he is a master teacher too of the senior high school department of Pampanga High School under the humanities and social sciences. And he is a guidance teacher of this uh, SHS guidance center of Pampanga High School since June 2018 to present. He is a Hume Strand Coordinator of the Senior High School Department of Pampanga High School since June 2017 to present. And also he is an Associate professor, uh, Professional Lecturer One at the School of Arts and Sciences of Holy Angel University since June 2018 in present, I think. And he is a Faculty Club President of Senior High School uh, in 2016 to 2000, uh, 2018, and Secretary of the Parent Teacher Association of PHS in 2016 and 2017. A career service professional eligible, a licensed professional teacher, a psychometrician, and a registered guidance counselor. Friends, let us all welcome Sir Ezekiel T. Abad Santos. Good evening, sir. Good evening, po. Good evening. I'm so well pleased to be invited by Sir Richard, no, my colleague in uh, Pampanga High School. And of course, uh, to 
to be with Dr. Bernadette Liharde of the Division of Pampanga. And of course, no, Miss Elaine C. Uh, yung pong husband niya nakasama po sa, no, sa MTOT noon. That was all, uh, I think, 2016 yata. So we were the first batch of senior high school teachers to be trained no, by the region. So now, I will uh, share with you some uh, nuggets of wisdom about uh, uh, what you call this uh, evidence-based, no? evidence-based uh, guided services. Okay, in the Philippines, utilizing research in improving the field. So uh, when we had our initial meeting with uh, Dr. Richard and Dr. Liharde, so we uh, we uh, Agreed no, that we will share some, some uh, uh, highlights. And I discovered that when we say uh, research, no, this may refer to laws, histories, theories no, on a certain discipline or topic. In our case, uh, guidance and counseling. So what does... Uh, what does uh, research say about guidance and counseling so my my talk for this evening will will uh, uh, revolve around three three uh, bodies of research the history you know, the recorded history uh, the laws policies and even the theories pertaining to guidance and counseling you know there are some misconceptions no, up to now although uh, there was there's now the law no yung uh, republic act 9258 but up until now still uh, we are hounded by some misconception okay some uh, some uh, ideas that we can clarify no in this webinar so if i will now share with you uh, my no my my powerpoint presentation can i have now my yes yes sir you can you can share now okay so Not yet, sir. Yung ano pa lang po. Sorry. Yung file pa lang, pero yung hindi pa okay. po siya nag-review. Um, siguro po, sir, you stop sharing and then you share it again po, sir. Parang nag-hang po. Ayan, sir. Nag-show na. Okay na? Ay, nawala po ulit. Share niyo po ulit, sir. Okay. Sharing na po. Ayan, sir. Okay yeah. na po. Okay. So, for... Uh, Ayan. So, it's all about uh, guidance services in the Philippines. Utilizing research and improving the field. So, uh, from uh, Jimmy Johnson, he said that give people enough guidance to make the decision you want them to make. Don't, don't tell them what to do but encourage them to do what is best. No? That's from Jimmy Johnson, a quote on guidance. No? And then, uh, as I... As I uh, 
Sabi niya, this webinar aims to inculcate the value of research and evidence-based decision-making in the field of guidance services, both in the Philippine public and private schools. So this as well takes you to the journey in guidance services and in research and how the two areas can work together to bring the best school environment for the Filipino learners. So our target participants will be public and private schools, guidance counselors, and guidance teacher designates, school administrators, and other concerned professionals. Okay, no. so what does research say about guidance and counseling in the Philippines? So research is history, laws, and theories you know, related to guidance and counseling practices in the Philippines. So history, laws, and theories are as values of research. So recorded or even oral history is used to make decisions and that in itself is getting out research. While laws and policies which are enacted and enforced to give directions are a product of research. And even theories are formulated based on the research. So first we will have the evolution and foundations of guidance and counseling no? as part of the historical perspective of the subject. So the guidance or the school counseling formally started at the turn of the 20th century. So it's a, it's a new field no? in, the, in the education. And then the foundations of the counseling guidance principles can be traced back to ancient Greece and Rome with the philosophical teachings of Plato, idealism, and Aristotle. So guidance has uh, philosophical perspectives no? from uh, idealism of Plato and realism of Aristotle. So this is the history of guidance and counseling in the Philippines. So, so we know that uh, the pre-colonial Philippines was much like the neighboring Indonesia and Malaysia. And counseling still shows vestiges of indigenous help seeking through superstition, reliance on elders, faith healers, and fortune tellers, and even belief in supernatural, according to Bulatao in 1992. So uh, this is the historical perspective. And then in 1521, so we know that the Philippines was discovered by Magellan, and then the Spanish colonization began also and this resulted in religious conquest. 80% of Philippines are Roman Catholics. And then of course, in the American occupation from 1898 to, 14, to 1941, followed uh, the Spanish colonization. So we know that the Americans had this uh, contribution to Philippines, the public school. No? and the form of government. So this is one of the influences of the uh, American regime in the Philippines. No? And then the language of instruction in the country is English and greater respect is given to anything American over anything Filipino. So the United States has even had a significant impact on counseling because Filipino counselors and psychologists often trained there. So, so if you look at it, our first Filipino counselors, psychologists were trained formally in US. No? So, yeah. And of course, in 1964, the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association was founded. So up to now, this is the accredited uh, professional organization of guidance counselors, supervisors, and even counselor educators. Again, it was conceptualized in 1964 by a group of educators, psychologists, and counselors, some of whom were trained in the U.S. So the first Filipino counselors, guidance uh, supervisors, educators, and even psychologists were trained in the United States, you know, as early as 1964. So this is the vision of the of the PGCA, the premier Philippine professional organization of counselors with international recognition. So the mission is to be at the forefront in the development of counselors who are professional, goal-driven, committed advocates, 
responsive to the needs of their clientele in the promotion of their well-being to make them proactive contributors in the pursuit of a just and humane society. So sometime in 1964, Father Jaime Bulatao, a Jesuit, and Father Antonio Ledesma, uh, yes, from, uh, from Ateneo, broached the idea of a professional organization of guidance workers to Dr. Esperanza Limcato of UP. So there's a great, uh, there's a number of professionals gathered in response to their call, mostly guidance counselors, counselor educators, and guidance supervisors. So if you know Father Jaime Bulatao, he is one of the first Filipino psychologists and a sociologist. And he's a Jesuit priest, no? along with uh, Father Antonio Ledesma and Dr. Esperanza Limcato of the University of the Philippines. Yeah. Sila po yung mga pioneering uh, professionals or counselors who, ano, who organize the Philippine Guidance and Counseling Association. Okay, so in April 1981, PGCA became a member of the Western Region of the American Counseling Association, the only counseling organization in Asia that is given the privilege by the USA National Counseling Association. So the first, uh, the first uh, counseling organization in Asia from the Philippines given the privilege to be part of the national, of the USA National Counseling Association. Again, in 2018, PGCA further forged partnership with the Australian Counseling Association and with the Association of Psychotherapists and Counselors in Singapore, no? or the APACS. Okay. So primarily, these are the activities no? by the accredited uh, professional organization of guidance counselors. They have annual convention, mid-year convention, continuing professional education programs, courses, no? just like last uh, two or three months ago, we have these webinars no, hosted and organized by PGCA. Of course, they have also research and publication, social responsibility and partnerships. So uh, uh, currently these are the board of directors no, of uh, PGCA and the members of the board. No? One of the active uh, members of the board is Sir, is Sir Francis Ray Subong. No? Yan po, ang ating mga directors ng PGCA. Okay, so from 1970s to 1990s, the movement in counseling was primarily indigenization no? from Bolatao and Enriquez. So they, they, they had assessments, constructs, and theories focusing on the differences between the counseling models learned in the U.S. within the context of Philippine culture and the realities of its social issues. So from 1970s to 1990s, they were trying, uh, they were doing comparative studies no? in, in the counseling assessments and theories between U.S. models in the Philippine context. As I said, our first counselors and psychologists were trained in U.S. So they had their uh, influences from, from the U.S. Okay, so at a glance, this is the journey, no? Yeah. So first, counseling as a conceived in the U.S. began in the Philippines during the American occupation from 1913 to 1934. Then we have two colleges in Manila providing guidance services geared towards identifying professions and opportunities for employment. And the establishment of the first psychological clinic at the University of the Philippines. So yung pala, no, the UP had the first uh, clinic. And then the third one, the, the growth of guidance and counseling was hampered in World War II. Yes, it began in 1913 to 1934, but uh, consequently hampered by the World War II in the 1940s. And then number four, yun nga, from 1940s to 1960s, the training and the birth of professional organizations. Ayan. So now, that was the history of guidance and counseling. Now we will move to the laws affecting the practice of guidance and counseling. So there are 
six landmark legislations relative to the guidance and counseling practice in the Philippines. First, we have the 1987 Philippine Constitution. And then the second one, the Batas Pambansa 232 or the Education Act of 1982. This was enacted in the time of President Ferdinand Marcos. And then we have the Republic Act number 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013 or the K-12 to program. And then we have the Republic Act number 11036 or the Mental Health Act of 2018, Republic Act 11206 or the Secondary School Code Guidance and Counseling Act, and of course, the Republic Act 9258 or the Guidance and Counseling Act of 2004. So these are the landmark legislations or laws okay on guidance and counseling we will have a review of this loss now so what does the 1987 constitution say about uh, guidance I mean, all in article 14 section 3 paragraph 2 all educational institutions shall strengthen ethical and spiritual values develop moral character and personal discipline encourage critical and creative thinking broaden scientific and technological knowledge and promote vocational efficiency. So even the Philippine constitution is saying that uh, there will be vocational efficiency. And we will know later uh, the mandate of guidance and counseling no? uh, for vocational efficiency. And then for the Batas Pambansa 232 or the Education Act of 1982 uh, in Section 9, Rights of Students in School. So the right to school guidance and counseling services for decisions and selecting the alternatives in fields of work suited to his potentialities. So the Education Act of 1982 is telling us that students, no in public and even in private schools have the right to school guidance and counseling services yeah. and of course the republic act 10533 or the enhanced basic education act of 2013 ito yung k-12 na sabi niya yan, in, uh, section 9 in career guidance and counseling advocacy so DepEd in coordination with dole and testa and even ched shall regularly conduct career advocacy activities for secondary level students. Yeah. So, so career and employment guidance counselors who are not registered and licensed guidance counselors. So we are very clear on this. No? So we have non-RGCs. So those uh, non-RGCs can be career and employment guidance counselors. They are not registered and licensed guidance counselors. And they will be allowed to conduct career advocacy activities to secondary level students of the school where they are currently employed, provided that they undergo a training program to be developed or accredited by the DepEd. Ayun. So we are clear. No? So again, for the guidance teachers uh, designates, no? so you can engage in career uh, advocacies no? or career advocacy activities for non-RGCs. So when we say career advocacy activities, uh, this will guide secondary level students in choosing the career tracks that they intend to pursue. So what are career advocacy activities? Provision of career information and experiences advising, coordinating, and making referrals, and may include but not limited to career talks, career job fairs, parents' orientations, and seminar workshop on career decision making. So schools no, are, are mandated no, to perform or to engage in these career advocacy activities under the K-12 program. Again, in Section 19, sabi niya, career advocacy may be conducted by career advocates and peer facilitators. So they can be uh, 
uh, teachers, and even students, but uh, they are given training muna. So career advocates refer to career and employment guidance counselors who are not registered and licensed guidance counselors. Kaya nga, we are career advocates, no? even teachers. So if you are not yet a registered and licensed counselors, you can be career advocates. Ayun. So career advocates include homeroom advisors and teachers of all learning areas who will implement career advocacy activities. Kaya di ba ngayon eh, meron tayong homeroom guidance na and even this uh, career forum uh, during the uh, old normal, di ba? I don't know now sa new normal kung ano mangyayari sa mga uh, career forums and other career advocacy activities. But uh, since 2013, we had been doing this career advocacy activities with uh, with teachers and, and uh, advisors. No? Okay, so uh, peer, uh, peer facilitators are secondary level students trained to assist career advocates in implementing career advocacy. So if I remember sa Pampanga School, meron kaming peer facilitators. No? They assist us uh, in, in, uh, in, in career forum, career talks. No? So they are students uh, trained to assist career advocates. So these are the provisions of the 8-12. Ayun. So ano daw ang role ng DepEd? No? Integrate career concepts in the curriculum and undertake teaching in relevant learning areas. So they they want uh, they even uh, they even want DepEd to uh, no, to integrate uh, career no? career uh, education in the curriculum, conduct career assessments, and conduct regular career advocacy activities. So this will be a regular program in DepEd schools. No? Now, we have another law enacted in 2018, yung Mental Health Act. And schools, uh, deputy schools, the private and public, are also one of the uh, uh, given the mandate no, to, to pursue or to uh, develop program for Mental Health Act. So when you say mental health refers to state of well-being in which the individual realizes one, one's own abilities and potentials, copes adequately with the normal stresses of life, displays resilience, okay? It's like now, amid COVID, no, we, we have to uh, give intervention so that our learners can be resilient in times of difficult situations and work productively and fruitfully, and of course, to make a positive contribution to the community. So we want our learners no, to be mentally fit and to be mentally healthy. That's why we have Republic Act 11036 or the Mental Health Act of 2018. Ayan. So mental health services refer to psychosocial, psychiatric, or neurologic activities and programs along the whole range of mental health support services, including promotion, prevention, treatment, and aftercare, which are all provided by mental health facilities and mental health professionals. So, sabi niya, mental health professionals refers to a medical doctors, psychologist, nurse, social worker, and take note, guidance counselor or any other appropriately trained and qualified person with specific skills relevant to the provisions of mental health services. Okay, na? so doon sa, mga, doon sa mga professionals, okay, who are part of the mental health professional team, doctor, psychologist, nurse, social worker, and even guidance counselor in schools or anyone who is appropriately trained and qualified person. Okay. All public and private educational institutions 
shall be required to have a complement of mental health professionals. So this is the mandate. Kaya ngayon ngayon, eh, meron tayong mga mental health awareness uh, webinars, no? workshops, orientation, because the law says that uh, schools, we are required to have a complement of these mental health professionals. No? So in our case, sa, sa DEPED, or sa schools, no, we have the, the guidance teachers, of course, who is trained, no? and even the guidance counselors. So these are the role of uh, schools, no? promote mental health, provide basic support services for individuals at risk or already have a mental health condition, and establish efficient linkages with other agencies and organizations that provide or make arrangements to provide support, treatment, and continuing care. Employers, no? even in the, uh, in, in the private sector, no? they are also mandated to have uh, mental health programs no? designed to raise awareness, correct the stigma and discrimination associated with the mental health conditions, identify and provide support for individuals at risk and facilitate access of individuals with mental health conditions to treatment and psychosocial support. I think in school, guidance counselors and those who are trained can engage in psychosocial support like the, uh, the PFA or the, the psychological first aid. That's one of the... That's one of the uh, services offered under psychosocial support. And of course, the law uh, 11206 Secondary School Career Guidance and Counseling Act. Ah, so these are the, uh, the highlights. No? The, the establishment of the National Secondary School Career Guidance and Counseling Program or the Career Guidance and Counseling Program Centers. And of course, pati yung NCAE, no? the National Career Assessment Examination, was turned over to uh, the, yeah, yeah. although nasa DEPED nito, but it was uh, reinforced by the Republic Act 11206 or the Secondary School Career Guidance and Counseling Act. Of course, yung pinaka-crowning glory ng mga laws on guidance and counseling is the Republic Act 9258 or the Guidance and Counseling Act of 2004. So this is the professionalization of the practice of guidance and counseling and uh, of guidance and counseling. So the most significant development in the Philippine counseling is the Guidance and Counseling Act of 2004 or the Republic Act 9258. So this is to professionalize the practice of guidance and counseling and to create the professional regulatory board of guidance and counseling, which is under the administrative control and supervision of the Professional Regulatory Commission or PRC. Okay, so prior to, to 2004, before 2004, mental health workers did not need a license to practice nor was there a regulatory board to ensure adequate training and ethical practice. So guidance counselors pioneered regulation for counseling and psychologists followed through the enactment of Philippine Psychology Act of 2009 or the Republic Act number 10029. Nauna pa yung mga guidance counselors. No? So the, the guidance counselors had the regulation in 2004, while the psychologists only in 2018 yet, I know, 2009, 2009 sila. So ahead ng mga counselors ng five years no, sa mga psychologists. So that's from Kabilin 2010. So ito ang definition ng guidance and counseling sa law. No? Sabi niya, it is a profession that involves the use of an integrated approach to the development of a well-functioning individual primarily by helping him or her potentials to the fullest and plan him or her to utilize 
his or her potential to the fullest and plan his or her future in accordance with her with his or her abilities, interests, and needs. So we are concerned about the future of our learners no? in accordance with their abilities, interests, and needs. It includes functions such as counseling subjects, particularly subjects given in the licensure examination and other human development processes. So this is how guidance and counseling is defined under Republic Act 9258. Again, because uh, there's now the law, there are prohibitions against the practice of guidance and counseling. So no person shall engage in the practice of guidance and counseling without a valid certificate of registration and a valid professional identification card or a special permit from PRC. B, make, shall uh, make representations to the public or to third persons as a licensed guidance counselor during the time that the license has been revoked or suspended. So, kung na-revoke man yung, yung lisensya ng guidance counselor, hindi niya pwede itong ipahiram. Para yung iba naman ang hindi pwede yun, no? That is a uh, misrepresentation. So that's a prohibition. May penalty yun, no? And then C, uh, no person shall allow anybody to use his or her license as guidance counselor to enable such unqualified individual to engage in the practice of guidance and counseling. So hindi pwedeng ipahiram yung lisensya mo para yung tao yun na hindi naman siya qualified or nag-train ay mag engage sa practice ng guidance and counseling. No? So these are the prohibitions under the law of 9258. So again, what are the qualifications? So there will be examination required. No? All applicants for registration shall be required to undergo licensure examination to be given by the board and the commission. Yeah. And then, what are the other qualifications? Citizens of the Republic of the Philippines. No? So you should be a full-blooded Filipino. Okay? You are not convicted of any offense involving moral turpitude. And ito pa, no? Itong, itong uh, number C qualification, controversial yan. No? Ang, ang qualification daw ng mga magkitik ng examination are those who are holders of a bachelor's degree in guidance and counseling or in other allied disciplines and a master's degree in guidance. You know that in the Philippines, only guidance, and counsel guidance counselors and psychologists are required to have master's degree in their profession to be allowed or to be qualified to take the examination. Mamaya, pag-usapan niya, kasi yung problema yan ng mga, ng mga guidance counselors up to now, that, that uh, is a concern no? among counselors and even the PGCA. No? Later, we will have that one. And then these are the scope of examination. No? So the examination will be in English and shall consist of a written test covering the following subjects. Philosophical, psychological, and sociological foundations of guidance, counseling theories, tools, and techniques, psychological testing, organization and administration of guidance service, group process, program development, and career guidance. So remember that no? career guidance is one of the scope no? or components of the examination. So that will be the pair weight subject. So for the counseling, theories, 35%, group process, 20, psychological, 15, career guidance, 10, foundations of guidance, 10, organization, administration, and program development, 10. Mas marami yung, ano, yung counseling, theories, tools, and techniques. That is 35% of the weight per subject ng examination. Okay, so of course, there are some ethical considerations. No? Any unethical practice of guidance and counseling 
as may be defined in a code of ethics and code of technical standards is prohibited. Number one, yung sa rule uh, for section 28, right to privilege communication. What does this mean huh? under the law? A certified guidance counselor or registered and licensed guidance counselor who is allowed to practice guidance and counseling in accordance with RA 9258 cannot, without the consent of the client, be examined as to any communication or information which has been acquired while attending to, to such client. So halimbawa, you are a registered and licensed guidance counselor. So you have this uh, right to privilege communication. So whatever that was said to you by the counselor, any communication related to you, even confidential communication, no, we are protected by law. We cannot be examined as to any communication or information acquired while we are doing our job as guidance counselors. The protection accorded herein shall extend also to the records and secretary of clerk of registered and licensed guidance counselors. Even the records and even uh, the documents no, pertaining to the practice of uh, counseling, no one can can uh, can examine that, or no one can can have access to that no? without the consent of the client. Okay. Any evidence obtained in violation of this provision shall be inadmissible for any purpose and proceeding. So, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin, no? for any purpose kasi nga, uh, there is this what we call right to privilege communication but of course there are exceptions to the rule the right to privilege communication if the client or the service user causes harm to him or herself and the community you know, kung, kung meron ng harm uh, done to the client or service user of course no uh, that can be that can be uh, lifted, and then the client service user expressly waives when 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 the client, the counselee or the service user waives his or her right, and if there is an order from the competent court of law via subpoena, you land. So if the court gives you uh, or sends you subpoena na pinapatawag yung counsel dahil kailangan yung statement niya and of course the court wants wants the wants the guidance counselor to divulge or to say something no, about what transcribed or what uh, what was said or what was communicated in the counseling that will be the exceptions to the rules but other than that guidance counselors are protected by the right to privilege communication. Another one, your counselor supervision. Supervisors and managers have a responsibility to help practitioners acquire professional competencies, maintain and enhance further the guidance and counseling practice for clients' welfare. This is from the Manual of Technical Standards for Registered and Licensed Guidance Counselors. So, so the counselors, you know, from time to time, they are being supervised, managed, and they are mentored by supervisors you know, or by the guidance supervisors because uh, we want them to be competent and to be updated you know, in, in, in trends or developments in the counseling profession. And according to Fallender and Shafransky in 2010 from the Australian Counseling Association, scope of practice for registered counselors, supervision is a distinct professional activity in which education and training aimed at developing science-informed practice are facilitated through a collaborative interpersonal process. It involves observation, 
evaluation, feedback, and the facilitation of supervisory self-assessment and the acquisition of knowledge and skills by instruction, modeling, and mutual problem solving. This is one of the code of ethics. So we are supervised. No? We have our, our guidance uh, supervisors or managers to assist us and to train us further no? for, this, uh, for this profession. Ayan. So this is the journey. No? So this is the laws enacted. No? Uh, prior to 2004, counselors and other mental health workers uh, didn't need a license to practice. But in uh, 2004, enactment of Republic Act 9258 or the Guidance and Counseling Act, and then in 2009 naman, New Psychology Act, and then in, in 2018, the Mental Health Act. So this is a journey no, of uh, laws, legislations, okay, uh, on guidance and counseling in the Philippines. Okay, now what is a program? No? If you if you notice, there's a there's a scope in the examination program development. So it is mga mga contextualized uh, programs in guidance. No, so when we say guidance program, this is a system of services designed to improve the adjustment of each and every person for whom it is organized. While current guidance program, a system of services designed to help an individual come up with a career plan to meet his or her life goals and to implement the plan. So again, if I may uh, say this, uh, counselors no, and even guidance teachers are career advocates. So we can uh, engage in, in guidance in career guidance program activities. Of course, we have the mental health program. This is a system of services designed to maintain the state of well-being of an individual in order that he or she may realize his own abilities and potentials, copes adequately with the normal stresses of life, displays resilience in the face of extreme life events, works productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a positive contribution to the community. While Career Guidance Advocacy Program is a system of activities designed to guide the secondary level learners in choosing the career tracks they intend to pursue and may be implemented by non agencies pursuant to Republic Act 10533 and with respect to 9258. So these are complementary laws, no? Yung sa psychology and guidance and counseling. So all this can be integrated in the career guidance program and even in the career guidance advocacy program in schools, no? Or designed or offered in schools, Dep Ed and Ched, and even in the in test. Okay. Now we will have the guidance services. Remember, our, our topic is evidence-based guidance services. So what are the guidance services uh, offered in the Philippine uh, setting? Yeah, of course, your counseling. One of the, uh, the, one of the major services. No? of guidance. So this is a dynamic personal interaction between counselor and the counselee, where the counselor employs what? Methods, approaches, or techniques to enhance the counselee's intrapersonal and interpersonal development and competences. So on so as a counselor, you have to employ methods, approaches, and techniques for the counselee, okay, for his intrapersonal and interpersonal development and competences. So it can be individual, individualized or group. 
So sabi nga, the counseling service is the heart of the guidance program. And according to the implementing rules and regulations, counseling is considered synonymous to and interchangeable with guidance and counseling. So in the Philippines, when we say counseling, this is synonymous no, to guidance and counseling profession or guidance and counselors. Although we have also marriage counselors, spiritual counselors, legal counsel, no, but in the Philippines, under the laws, no, in the researches, counseling is interchangeable with guidance and counseling. Okay, the practice of guidance and counseling depends on gaining and honoring the trust of clients. Kaya dapat yung mga, no, you can keep confidences. No? As a counselor, uh, okay, we, 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 have, we have the, the, the ethical, the ethical, the ethics of confidentiality. So what is related to you, di ba, sa right to privilege communication, no? You should not divulge information or communication you acquired, no? From counseling, even to your spouse, even to anyone, even to your boss. My exceptions, when there's a harm na, no? alam ba, ah, nasa may, may, ano, may, may namimiligro yung, ano, yung, yung kliyente, meron siyang uh, tendency or suicidal tendency. Okay, of, dapat ipaalam mo na sa mga mahal niya sa buhay dahil uh, ang nangyayari, may piligro sa kanyang buhay. No? There's a threat or to his life. So you should uh, make his family know about his or her conditions. And of course, if there's a subpoena from the court, no? So we you know we we gain the trust of our clients. Kasi nga, we are we are uh, covered no by the ethics of confidentiality. So counseling service keeping trust requires an attentiveness to the quality of listening and respect offered to clients. Culturally appropriate ways of, of communication that are courteous and clear, maintaining respect for privacy and dignity, and careful attention to clients' consent and confidentiality. Sabi nga ni Carl Rogers, eh, uncond unconditional positive regard. Yan. So we have to respect, okay? We have to respect the privacy and dignity of our clients. And we have to listen to them. Let them uh, let them know that we are interested, no? and we are attentive. We are attentive to them. So this is from the Rule Nine Code of Manual of Technical Standards for Registered and Licensed Counselors. Of course, these are the counseling services, no? relationship building, assessment and diagnosis, formulation of counseling goals, intervention and problem solving, termination and follow up. Research and evaluation. Palagi na ng research. This is from Cormier and Hackney in 1993. So there are six uh, steps no, in the counseling process. Yeah. Of course, now in the Mental Health Act, uh, we have this uh, Psychological First Aid or, or the PFA. Yung, yung look, listen, and link. So in here, you know, as long as uh, any teacher or any advocate or any school worker can be, can be a, uh, or can, can engage or can conduct psychological first aid, as long as he or she is uh, trained to do so. But counseling is only for the registered licensed counselors because you, you use techniques in counseling like the cognitive behavior therapy, solution focus therapy, reality therapy, and other, marami yan. There are a uh, 
tens or twenty twenty therapists no used in the counseling. Okay, now I want you to understand no, my colleagues, guidance uh, designates teachers and counselors the difference between advice, guidance, and counseling. So, so when we say advice, this is a one-way process. So counseling, okay, counseling is not advising or not advice. Ano bang advice? No? One way lang, one way process, like giving an opinion, making a judgment, making a recommendation. Okay, we have our legal advice. Huh? So if you have some, so if you have some, uh, some cases, no, you have to seek the legal advice of a lawyer or attorney. Kasi nga, you want, you want to hear the judgment or the recommendation. Or even the doctor. No? What, what does the doctor uh, say about a certain sickness? Advision. Advision. One way lang siya. No? It's only the expert or the, or the other party who, uh, who talks and who gives opinion and makes judgment and recommendation. Guidance is a one-way exchange showing the way, educating, influencing, and instructing. No? Same with education. Because guidance is educative. No, you educate. No? You give facts. You influence. You instruct. You mentor. Okay? You show the way. Sabi nga nila. So bottom line, you are encouraging. Advice, you are persuading. In the guidance, you are encouraging. But for counseling, this is different. Counseling is a two-way exchange, enabling clients to explore problems, understand problems, resolve, and come to terms with problems. The goal of the counselor for the counseling is to be autonomous, to be independent to stand again on his own. Kaya nga, both of you are in a, uh, you are exploring problems. You are getting some information from your client, from your counselor, and then you present some options. You present some, ano, some, uh, some uh, uh, options, no? Or you understand problems, and then you resolve. You come to terms with problems in counseling and alliance they call it alliance there should be an alliance between the counselor and then the counseling because you are exploring problems hindi siya one way it's a two way process kaya nga hindi rin pwede sabihin na okay you have to go to the uh, counselor for uh, to the guidance counselor to 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 seek an advice no Counseling is not advice seeking and advice uh, giving. Counseling is a two way exchange. The bottom line is facilitative, no? helping relationship. Counseling is a helping relationship and it is, a, it is facilitative. No? You facilitate uh, the counseling for the counselor to be self-reliant and autonomous yeah okay another service is, is the psychological testing no? administration and interpretation of standardized tests in order to better understand the counseling client and the behavior it identifies not just weaknesses of a person but also their strengths and measures an individual's performance at a specific time. So these are the tests, okay, given as part of the sex testing, no? the personality, career, interest, mental ability, attitude, achievement, learning, and study orientation. So career guidance man, uh, we are career advocates, no? According to Villar, uh, she naging ano, uh, one of the board of directors of uh, PGCA. Sabi niya, career guidance is a process of helping an individual or learner come up with 
personal career plan by collecting, collating, and evaluating various information about the self and the world of work to help the client meet his or her life goals and take the necessary steps to implement the plan. Yeah. So pagtulong daw, no? you, you, you help the learner to come up with a plan no? so you can uh, prepare him or her to, uh, to meet his life goals no? and for the world of work. Okay, the service, attend okay, do you know that guidance and counseling or the guidance services has research also, no? So one of the services in the guidance is what we call research. So this attempts to unearth the needs of the institutional community, establish the need for improvement, yun, di ba? And then validate new strategies, techniques, and intervention, and then we want to discover and to research different alternatives for attaining goals for our learners, of course, no? for our clients. So see how close guidance and counseling to research. No? Because one of the services offered is research. Placement. So this is uh, the clientele's movement to the appropriate educational or occupational level or program or entry into the appropriate co-curricular and extracurricular activities in pursuit of further education or other employment upon leaving the institution. Now, we call it placement. It is similar to career guidance. However, it is mostly appropriate for tertiary level. No? Like in our case, uh, senior high school. No? We, if you are, if you are enrolled in STEM, of course, no? we want you to be replaced, no? or we want you to take uh, careers in college uh, aligned to STEM, engineering, sciences, information technology, oh, UMS, diba? social sciences, education, ABM, accountancy, business, management, and then the TVL. So, yun ang placement. Kaya nga, yung, yung, yun po kasing um, uh, NCAI or the National Career Assessment, Assessment Examination, yun, no? If, uh, yun ang assessment ng mga bata ngayon. So, there's a measure that would tell you na, okay, so you are, you are appropriate for, for yung strand or ABM strand because this is your uh, this is your result in the NKI. No? So the NKI result can help guidance counselors in the placement of learners. And then we have referral, no? important yan. It is a service for the provisions of tapping of agencies, organizations, or individuals that may be of better assistance in the counselor's resolution of problems and attainment of goals. Okay, now, meron tayong, as counselors, we have our, we have our limitations, no? or our, or the scope of our expertise. No? For guidance counselors, we are in the psychosocial well-being, maladjustment, but of course, if the, if some learners or our clients are displaying some symptoms na kailangan na, na siya i-refer sa psychologist or psychiatrist, then we can have or we can use the referral service. No? Because there are, there are agencies, organizations, or individuals or professionals that may be of better assistance in the counselor's resolution of problems. No? So pag hindi talaga, pag hindi mo na siya, pag hindi, pag hindi mo linya, you can refer. Even in the psychological first aid, we use the link no, for referral. Okay? Uh, kumain na ba kayo? Or meron ba kayong naramdaman sa, sa inyong mga katawan? No? So, kung, kung meron muna kayong naramdaman sa inyong katawan, maybe medical, no? siguro before, before counseling, we may 
first refer you to our doctors or nurses or or uh, or our frontliners no yan kamukha ng shift bago yung we have our we have our pandemic now now we are amid pandemic so ano bang kailangan mga tao ngayon yung mga yung, yung mga yung mga nag nag positive na no? so first we refer them to the medical frontliners no? because that is their immediate need and then after that siguro they need uh, uh, the briefing or therapy or uh, then that will be the time that uh, they will they will refer these patients to professionals no or to to, to counselors psychologists or mental health professionals so we call that referral of course this is the individual inventory collection of extensive information about the individual for proper understanding decision making and placement ayun yung cumulative uh, records no so you use that no and then you have to uh, safe keep the individual inventory because mostly this uh, these documents are are confidential no? so it's only you the counselor and then the the guidance director who can have access to this uh, information or or documents or in inventory no? of course the information service no? it provides a comprehensive and systematic collection and dissemination of information outside the individual through various methods or programs to assist students in their personal, educational, and occupational planning. Kaya nga, ang mga bata, no, ang, mga, ang mga sedyante, ang unang pinagtatanungan ay yung mga guidance counselors. If they, if they want uh, information on school, Policies, admission, di ba? Sa Papangay, we have our uh, group guidance no? or our information service. Pag mayroong mga ganun, we will, we will inform them ano ba yung mga dapat yung malaman. Halimbawa, this pandemic, no? ano ba yung protocols sa school? Kasi nga, we, we are not permitted to have face-to-face -face interaction. So, the... Uh, the school heads, the principals, uh, and the teachers with the guidance counselors should have information drive for the learners. Uh. So they, one of the service given by, by the guidance is the information. Uh. Ayun. So uh, there are eight information service services uh, in Philippine uh, guidance. Now we are in the reality bites, now in the practices of the profession of a guidance counselor in the Philippines. Now, siguro bago ito, um, awal lago, I, I, I told you na yung sa qualification ng uh, mga guidance counselor applicants no, sa examination, yung, yung tinatawag natin uh, uh, education. Kasi ang tase, no? only counselors and the uh, psychologists i don't know the you know, the, the the psychiatry no? at saka yung mga yung mga doctor siguro kasi sa mga teachers when you when you have your 18 units in methods of teaching or when you finish education you can have your you can take the licensure examination engineers no? and even some uh, professions but for kasi nang nagkaroon ng problema yan sa ating mga uh, counselors. No? But uh, we will take this one uh, one at a time. No? First, we have the question on ito. No? Are registered guidance counselors, guidance teachers, and even career advocates, discipline prefects? Are we going to engage? Are we going to be assigned by schools to be disciplinarians or discipline coordinators or discipline prefects in schools what does research say something about 
the assignment of guidance counselors as disciplinarians. Okay? Yeah. What does research say something about guidance counselors being given the work assignment as disciplinarians of learners? Do you know that as early as 1962, there is this pu uh, published research by Frank Nugent no, entitled Effective Use of High School Counselors in Disciplinary Situations. This was first published on November 1, 1962. Tagal da, no? From Washington. Okay, I will just give you so, the excerpts. No? Sabi niya dito, the gap in communication is of a critical nature because the assignment of counselors as disciplinarians changes the role of the counselor so drastically that he loses a non-threatening relationship, a relationship which is the core of counseling. Kasi nga, as counselors, our, our learners perceive us to be friends. We are student advocates. We are student friendly. But at the same time, other schools use this, uh, still use this uh, method no, of assigning counselors to be disciplinarians. So, ang nangyayari, nagiging disciplinarian. Kaya nga, imbes na yung mga bata o yung mga sadyante, pupuntaan tayo pag may mga problema, gusto magpa-counsel, may mga mental health issues, hindi, hindi ka pupuntahan. Kasi nga, you are, you, you are perceived by them to be first a counselor, second to be a disciplinarian. So nakakompromise yung role mo as a guidance counselor or a helping professional or a student advocate. Kaya nga, as early as 1962, discouraged na na ang mga counselors ay gagawing mga discipline coordinators or discipline prefects. Ginagawang panakot. Okay, let's continue. Because of the seriousness of this counselor misassignment, an attempt will be made to clarify for administrators how counseling theories view counselors' involvement in disciplinary cases. In addition, it will be shown that arguments defending the assignment of counselors as disciplinarians are contrary he said, are contrary to counseling theories. Maganda yung discipline, kaya dapat hiwalay. No? Uh, just, just this year only, in Pampanga School, uh, inalis na yung discipline uh, uh, prefect, no? o yung hindi na pinapahandle ng discipline cases ang mga guidance counselors. Daba kasi ang maghandle ng discipline, kung wala mang discipline prefect or discipline coordinator, the discipline of students okay, should be handled by the advisors, teachers, head teachers, or the principals, but never the guidance counselors. Okay? So this is the first uh, research, okay, telling us that counselors should not be disciplined coordinators or disciplinarians. Another research uh, in 2019 only, no? this was revised by the American School Counselor Association in the article, The School Counselor and Discipline. Okay, if I may read to you. School counselors collaborate with school personnel and other stakeholders to establish policies encouraging appropriate behavior and maintaining safe schools where effective teaching and learning can take place. Okay? To most effectively promote student achievement and development, school counselors must maintain strength-based relationship with students and therefore are not involved in administering discipline. The school counselor should be by policy, eh? by policy, 
designated as a neutral and resourceful consultant, mediator, and student advocate. So, ibig sabihin talaga, hindi pwede, no? Kasi it should be in the policy also. No, as far as I remember, so mga years ago, college sa so Holy Angel, noon, kasi may board of discipline eh. I think the, the dean, the discipline coordinator, the registrar, parang ganun, no? And then, the guidance director. But when, when, uh, when private institutions realize that there's a research telling that uh, schools or universities should not make their, their college uh, or their guidance counselors discipline uh, prefix, no, wala na yun. So from then on, in the list na sa board of discipline, ang guidance director o ang guidance counselor. Kasi hindi pwede. No? It is not the school's it is not the school counselor's role to serve as an enforcement agent for the school, but rather be a significant contributor to the development of the prevention intervention programs through which problem behaviors are managed and positive behaviors are nurtured. So, so that is a research, no? Timely. Only revised in 2019 by the American School Counselor. Counselors should not be involved in the administration of student discipline. Okay? That is, uh, that is uh, the research from American Counselor, Counselor Association. Kaya nga ito, ilang beses ka nang nag-guidance. Pag may problema, pag, nag, pag late, pag absent, pag may problem pa, pag may nag-away, okay? Iga-guidance. Ilang beses ka nang nag-guidance. Hindi po ito tama. Hindi ginagawang disciplinarians ang mga guidance counselors. Pag merong ganon, dapat, il, il, ang una dapat uh, mag-settle niyan, walang iba yung advisor o yung teacher. Then, it will be, it will be, uh, brought to the attention of the head teacher or the school principal, but never guidance counselors. No? Kaya nga, this is our, our summary. Guidance counselors are helping professionals and student advocates. Therefore, assign them to be disciplinarians or discipline prefects and dangers their role as mental health intervention givers and psychosocial well-being program providers. Okay, ito pa. Non-registered guidance counselors or non-RGCs can be career advocates and conduct psychological first aid provided that they are given training but they cannot engage in counseling students using approaches and techniques for which they are not formally trained and are not licensed to do so. So yun. Kaya nga, ngayon sa, sa DepEd, meron tayong mga guidance teachers. Yes, you can, be career, you, you can be career advocates. We can be career advocates. And we can even conduct psychological first aid as long as we are given training or we are trained, but we cannot engage in counseling students because we are not formally trained to do so. And we are not licensed to perform such duty of the guidance counselor. Okay? Oh, ito. The, uh, the another reality bite of uh, the guidance counseling profession the lack of guidance counselors is hampered by qualification standards set by RA 9258, not in conformity to the salary grade for guidance counselor positions 1 and 3. Okay, kasi, di ba remember doon sa qualifications, ano, ano ang qualifications ng, ano, ng, uh, ng, uh, ng guidance counselors? 
bago siya mag-apply ng licensure. Dapat MAGC. Itong, yes. Meron siyang bachelor's degree and of course, master's degree in counseling. Kaya sa, either MA, MAED, MS, or MED. And then, licensure examination. He can only uh, take the licensure examination when he has master's degree. Full pledge, ah. Pero ang kanyang magiging uh, position or SG, sa grade, sa DEPED, SG 11 lang hanggang SG 13. For life na yon. Kaya nagkaroon ng problema. Okay. Pero gumawa ang uh, PGCA. Uh, kasi meron tayong ano eh, uh, uh, Civil Service Commission Memorandum Circular si Number 16, Series of 2018. And this was uh, uh, lobbied by Mr. Francis Ray Subong. Okay. Ano siya? Education Program Specialist uh, sa DepEd Division of Iloilo. And now, he is currently the PRO of PGCA. A part of the letter says, this refers to your letter which was endorsed by the Presidential Action Center to the Commission's Public Assistance Center relative to your contention that CSC Memorandum Circular Number 16 Series of 2011 is contrary to the provisions of RA 9258. Please be apprised that the Human Resources Policies and Standards Office has already submitted for approval of the Commission the, spot, the proposed amendment of the qualification standards for guidance counselor positions particularly the master's degree requirement to conform with the provisions of RA 9258. Yan po ang nakasama. is master teacher too. Kasi nga, how can I how can I apply for uh, register for na for for RGC in public school, for RGC 1 to 13, ASG 14 yon, e ang master teacher, 1819, SG 1819. So, baba ba yung, yung SG mo? Baba ba yung sweldo mo? So, hindi siya, hindi siya harmonious. Na? Even sa mga counselor positions, biro mo, ang tas ng, ng, ng QS, gusto nila master's degree. Ang tas ng standard niya, Tapos, ang sweldo mo lang is SG14. Ano bang teacher 3? 12 yata o 13? Parang ganun lang. Eh, yung mga SG13 na teachers, teachers 3 yata, hindi requirement ang master's degree. As long as you are, are education or you got 18 units and then you pass the, the license examination for teachers. So ito naging contention ng PGCA and the de and some DepEd guidance counselors. Yan. Kaya meron ang memes eh, sa, sa DepEd. Kung nakulang ang mga guidance counselors, wala nga ang supply ng mga counselors, hanggang SG13 ka na lang for life. Wala kang career. No? Yun ang naging battle cry ng mga, na, na mga guidance counselors ngayon. Sabi nga nila, Alam mo, as guidance, as guidance counselors, we are engaged in career guidance. We help, we educate our learners to prepare them for, for the world of work. And yet, kami mismo, wala kaming career progression. No? Ito pang problema ng, ano, ng yan nga, na one guidance counselor to every 500 learners in the secondary school. So just imagine... Alam niyo sa Pampanga High School, how many, how many are we students, grade 7 to grade 12, around 14 na yata, 14,000 na yata. 14,000. Yes, tama si Sir Richard. No? Pero sabi ng, sabi ng mga batas ng, ng, ng DepEd, no? yeah, yung DEX uh, DBM organization, staffing, DepEd order number 77, Dapat daw, for every 500 learners in secondary school, there should be one. The guidance and counseling services is an administrative function that cannot be dispensed with. A guidance room 
shall be set aside and located if possible adjacent to the administrative area. It shall include separate and closed spaces for conducting individual counseling, testing, and storage of school records, school children's record, etc. But after now, these are the reality bites, no? or these are the gaps in the counseling, in the guidance and counseling professions in the Philippines. But the good news is that DepEd no? or the PGCA and group of DepEd guidance counselors are lobbying for the view of CSA Memorandum Circular 16, series of 2011, so that educational qualifications set by RA 925A be commensurate to the salary grade of guidance counselor positions, most especially the Department of Education. Alam ko sa, sa private chata, medyo ahead na sila eh. But now naman, uh, our, our PGCA, no? our accredited professional organization and our DepEd guidance coordinators are lobbying. Uh, they are now in the process of discussing and they are going pa to Congress eh, para, para kung pwede raw na i-amend no? yung if you see the letter a while ago yung, yung, part ni, yung letter ni Mr. Subong no? sabi niya uh, merong, merong contention ang DepEd na contrary to uh, to uh, RA 9258 law so they are not trying to harmonize no? and they are trying to uh, to uh, correct kung meron mga, mga provisions ang dapat i-correct. So that's so how that our counselors no? or DepEd can attract guidance counselors. Kasi yun ang problema ngayon. We cannot attract good guidance counselors because of that uh, of that uh, SG-13. No? Hanggang doon na lang yun ang kanyang ang kanyang, ang kanyang, uh, ang kanyang uh, career. So hopefully, siguro in, in, in a year or two, we can see uh, 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 changes no? or amendments and even rectification in our laws, in our policies no? pertaining to guidance and counseling uh, uh, professions in the Department of Education. Okay, so this is the final word from... Secretary of Education Alejandro Roses, every citizen should find his suitable and rightful place in the socio-economic order and contribute every ounce of energy and talent to the development and progress of the country. This can only be made possible only through teachers, especially guidance counselors. Hence, the need of a more coordinated functional guidance program. This is from a veteran uh, educator, Alejandro Roses. Okay, so these are the references I used. Okay. And then, of course, thank you for this opportunity and to God be all the glory. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very, very much, much Paul. Paul, Sir Ezekiel. Um, I feel so refreshed kasi po narin, although narinig ko po yung ibang mga parts nito in the past, but it's indeed refreshing, especially we are in the comfort of our homes. no. And uh, I would also like to comment yung mga comments ni Sir Richard kasi like, I do agree with those. No? Talaga pong kailangan. Uh, one thing is for sure, okay, uh, being in the guidance office and doing this task is a very delicate one. Uh, at a very sensitive po siya. So, ako kasi being a career guidance designate, I do not touch those matters or those um, treatments na ginagawa ng mga license. So, I take uh, precautionary measures, especially in giving advice or kung ano man po yung ibibigay na actions with regard to the conditions of our uh, students. Thank you very much po, Sir Ezekiel, for this uh, very uh, meaningful and very fruitful discussion of this topic. And now, uh, I would like to introduce our second speaker, uh, a very good friend of mine. And uh, she is blessed with a simple family with her husband, Jose M. Lejarde, and only son, Paul Joshua Lejarde. So she is a master teacher one and a guidance designate and research coordinator. Uh, she is also an active research presenter and a resource speaker. 
and she finished her Doctor of Philosophy in the year 2003 at Gogo National Colleges and uh, pursued her Master of Arts in Guidance and Counseling in the year 2012 at the University of the Assumption. So she received several awards such as Outstanding Teacher and Maya Pataladuru. Her years of service in the teaching profession has inspired her to start writing as her way of reaching out and touching people. By the way, she has a book and I have, I have it actually. So friends, let us all welcome Dr. Bernadette L. Liharde. No, ma'am. Okay, good evening, Ma. Hello. Um, I feel blessed for the opportunity to be part of this momentous event uh, where we will uh, definitely learn from each other. Um, Doc Chad, um, Sir KL, and of course, a good friend of mine, Ma'am Elaine. Okay. So I'll be sharing my screen. Go ahead. Is it sharing, ma'am? Uh, ma oh, yeah, maybe start the question and screen share. Okay, as you can see, Paul, let's start each day happy. Okay. Nakikita sure. na po ba yung screen? Ayan po, ma'am. Sige po. Bye. Okay. So, um, okay na po ba siya? Yes po, ma'am. Sure, pa lang. <laughs> okay na, Ma'am Lane? Um, hindi pa po, Ma'am. Um, uh, it takes me, it takes a while. Ayan po, Ma'am. Okay na po. Okay, so yes, po. like what I've mentioned, we need to start each day happy. Ayan po. Okay. So, um, as, let me share you this one, yung, uh, one of my favorite quotations it says as we learn about each other so we learn about ourselves okay so learning is the continuous process in life the day we stop learning new things it would be the end of life so this is all a process so if we stop learning and thinking then there is no creativity and knowledge in our life so it is in this matter that we owe a lot to research per se Okay, so let's have a very um, short activity po to our dear participants. Uh, would you mind to get a piece of paper or a scratch paper po dyan? And then afterwards, please key in your answers so that our moderator could be able to um, see your answers po. So this is just very quick uh, activity. Ayan. So meron na po ba kayong piece of paper? Ayan. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so please answer all questions using the scale below. Ayan po. So let's, uh, tandaan po natin yung mga number, no? That corresponds to our answer. So, one, never. Two, rarely. Three, sometimes. Four, often. And five, always. Ayan po. Nakita po ba yung mga uh, descriptive po natin? So, one, never. Two rarely, three sometimes, four often, and five always. Ayan po. Okay, so for the first question, do you tire more easily and feel exhausted most of the time? Okay, so ano po yung sagot nyo? One, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, number two, do you find yourself just putting in the arts and going through the motion? Okay. So number three, do you notice feeling detached and even avoiding clients, colleagues, family, and friends? 
Four, do you feel bored and apathetic about your work or commitment? So when we say apathetic, we mean uninterested po. Okay, five, do you tend to eliminate more enjoyable activities because there is more time for them? Okay, six, do you observe a tendency to engage in self-deprivation like excessive overtime, working late into the night, weekends, and um, during vacation? So when we say self-deprivation, we mean voluntary denial, okay? Seven, do you become overly invested in a client's welfare or in a project to the exclusion of other commitments? Eight, do you begin to medicate yourself with food, alcohol, pills, etc. as a way of coping? Okay, number nine, do you notice becoming increasingly cynical and disenchanted? So when you say cynical, this is uh, you're, you're starting to be distrustful. Okay, then disenchanted, you're disappointed by someone or something. And do you observe becoming more cranky and irritable? And 11, do you feel resentful of the time you spent with others and wish to have more time for yourself? So resentful meaning um, being annoyed. Okay, 12, do you feel relieved when an original plan to attend to a client or a project was canceled? Thirteen, do you begin to feel pessimistic about your client or your commitment? Fourteen, this is second to the last part. Do you have feelings of anger and contempt over many of your clients? Lastly, do you question your effectiveness as a, feeling, as a helping professional? Okay, let's add. Paki-add po yung mga sagot ninyo. And then, let's reveal the results. Ayan. And so actually, with it is burnout test interpretation po yan. Okay, so tignan po ninyo yung scores ninyo. So, kung pong 25 and below, you're doing fine. Kung 26 to 35, there are things you should be watching. And then, of course, kung 36 to 50, you are a candidate. And, of course, kung 51 to 65 po, you are burned out. So, meron po bang uh, burn out dito na nakuha? I hope wala po. Okay, so that is just a simple activity. And then, let us process it po. Okay, I used to tell this among my students education students that you cannot give what you don't have. Similarly, we guidance counselors, designates, and teachers should be at our best in order to cater the needs of our clientele. It will be difficult for us to attend to their concerns or issues if somehow we are burned out. That is why we need to always remind ourselves that we are amazing. So please tell it to yourself, I am amazing. I know it's pandemic. We are deprived of the things we used to do. There are restrictions, fear, and at times we seem to be paranoid already. But we need to remind ourselves that we are okay. We are amazing. Okay, po? So, we are facing the same uh, storm, but we are not riding on the same boats. Okay, so I learned this one from a spiritual uh, webinar that I attended. Okay, so what kind of boat are you riding in these trying times? Some may be riding this type of ship or boats. 
what is common to all of us now is that we are confronted by this pandemic. We experience lockdown and quarantine, but we have different ways on how we cope with it. We are actually evolving to the new normal. Okay? Some have faced difficulties in managing their mental health as they remain in their four walls of their homes. For others, this is a desperate crisis. For others, it is facing loneliness. For some, a moment of reflection. Okay. Um, a while back, Sir Kiel mentioned about the different services in the guidance po, no? Okay, if you notice, yung isa sa mga services sa guidance is research. Ayan po. So each of these services in the guidance have unique characteristics, meaning they have their own purposes or functions. Okay po? So will you agree with me if I will say that the guidance is rich with data that can be utilized and come up with simple research? How? So a particular service can be interconnected with the other services. For example, when you conduct an interview with a particular learner, you can read beforehand and have at least a background of the learner through the in individual inventory form. And from the findings, we can be able to craft our own intervention appropriately. Now, what is your greatest strength as a researcher? Okay po. So pwede po ninyong is, um, um, i-type yung sagot ninyo sa chat box para po mabasa ng ating um, uh, moderator na si Ma'am Elaine. So what do you think is your greatest strength as a researcher? Okay. Consider this. When we talk about research, it is creating new knowledge. You become a researcher not only because of your academic standing. You are a researcher when your output contributes to knowledge or creates new knowledge. Okay? So, it is the creation of new knowledge and um, to generate new concepts, methodologies, and understandings. Okay, so sharing my two uh, favorite lines from the works of uh, Shakespeare and one of my favorite poem, Desiderata. So all the words stage, okay, and all the men and women, merely players, they have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time play many parts, his acts being seven ages. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others. Even to the dull and the ignorant, they too have their own story. So let us have this scenario. How well do you know your students? Who would think that we will be in this situation? Okay. So now is the time that we guidance counselors, the designates and advocates to intensify our working relationship with our respective school heads and colleagues who are called teachers. Why? Okay. So in our current situation, are we aware of what they are experiencing now, our students? Okay. Have you checked on their status? Okay. How ready are students in the new setup of teaching learning? Ready may mean so many things. Like if they will be using online modality, do they have gadgets, internet connections? So kung modular naman or blended, how are they coping? Is there someone assisting them? Can they understand their lessons? But what is essential that students must be ready at is their mental and emotional well-being. Okay, according to to Secretary Leonor Briones, sabi nga po niya, learning must continue because education cannot wait. Okay? Let us work hand-in-hand hand with our co-teachers to ensure that they will be able to cope up with stress brought about by pandemic 
and the transition to the new normal. We need to collaborate. Okay? We need to collaborate with them. That is why we in the public, uh, po, uh, the self-guided PFA modules was facilitated in the first week of the op opening of class. But this time, to the, conduct, the conduct of PFA is quite different from the useful process because we do not have face-to-face -face contact. So how we counselors and designates come into the scene? That is, we need to collaborate. So collaboration is the key word today. Lists um, can, can be provided to designates of uh, those students who need assistance. And from there, you can have the data of the students who show signs of stress. That is already a research because research, it is a, it is a thing we do when we want to find out something. Okay. So next, are you open to change and possibilities? So nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may, we may fear less. Okay, so let us try to assess the different guidance services that we usually conduct before when there is no pandemic yet. For example, this month of October, Dipuba, it is actually intended for career guidance. We usually hold programs that showcases the different types of, types of jobs that our learners could have. But considering our condition, po, our current condition, how can we possibly help and guide our learners in the choice of their career? Probably we can explore other means of platforms that we can utilize in order to gather baseline data and make sure we follow the right process. Since we have already modules for uh, homeroom guidance intended for students, again, we need to collaborate to class advisors. It is very useful to utilize the output of the learners rather than having them accomplish and do nothing about it. So what are your plans? Okay. So reiterating the def definition of research, it is the creation of new knowledge. So let us visit our action plans and update them with the current condition. I would like to appeal to please include in your programs uh, some uh, uh, guidance counselors, pudito, and designates and advocates, um, yung programs for sons and daughters of OFW. Uh, to possible have uh, separate programs for them. Okay, our office could initiate such program. So I started my program for SDOs last school year. Now I can adopt the program. Who would know that this will happen? That our OFW parents are one of those that are greatly hit by pandemic. So I did a simple survey in our school as to who and how many students do we have whose parents work abroad? It is just a simple tool where it asks about who among the parents work abroad. Is it the father or mother or both? So what country, what type of job, number of years, they are in abroad, and who takes care of them in the absence of their parents? From there, I was able to come up with a research study. And fortunately, it was approved by our division and submitted for possible funding, so in the region. So it was a research made unexpectedly because of a case brought to me in the office. Then it gave me an idea regarding the plight of these OFW children. So this scenario has paved the way for me to be an active member of the ACMIP, yung, yung pong Archdiocesan Commission on Migrants and Itinerant People of Pampanga. So as an intervention, I am conducting values formation for SDOs, and I'm also a car I'm also being invited to webinars. So parang we can simply um, create kumustan session with them. So they need moral support. Let us make them feel that they 
you're not alone. Why? Because there are wounds that never show on the body that are deeper and more hurtful than anything that bleeds. Okay? So this second week, uh, this is the second week po ng um, opening of classes. So last Monday, I started soliciting responses from our co-teachers regarding the challenges and experiences in the new modality of delivering teaching and learning. So some of the responses po, uh, dealt with stress. Parents and students were complaining. Sobrang, sobrang dami po daw ng tasks. Hindi nila maintindihan kahit na may key answers ang SLM. Nahihirapan sa instructions. Umiiyak ang mga estudyante po dahil nag adjust Meron na rin pong mga online fatigue. So initially, meron na kaming nagawang intervention a new scheme para po for both teachers and parents and students as well para makahinga at mabawasan naman yung mga previous problems po nila. Okay, so makakatulong po sa atin yun yung kumustahan session. So let us try to coordinate with our colleagues po. No? So we can be able to solicit responses and then from there we can be able to make our intervention. So, ito po yung nakikita kong very appropriate in our current situation po. So, how will you engage in the new normal? Okay, tayo pong mga uh, guidance counselors, advocates, and designates. So, our students or learners were given into our care, but the weight of concerns and issues we have may be different and unique. Yung situation ko po, probably different sa situation niyo or probably uh, magkahawig. So as I've mentioned, let us co collaborate and try to assess what we can possibly do. Okay? Para makakuha po tayo ng mga baseline data according to our observation. Why? Because the real scenario, students are struggling confused, undecided, and uncertain. So putting all the letters together, ang create po natin kanina is H-O-P-E, hope. We can shed light to our students now. There are a lot of things we can do for them. Through our collaboration, we can collect responses from our students and parents regarding how they are doing now in the new modality so that we can make intervention or proposals to our school head for some adjustments. No one is in indispensable today. All of us are adjusting. In our school, we allotted in our schedule feedbacking and monitoring. Isama po ninyo sa class program ninyo yon so that we can be able to determine who among our students are having difficulties in learning through modular delivery. So in like manner, we can also update our teachers. Baka po kasi sobra ang naibibigay na work. Uh, baka maburden ng mga bata. So the challenge lies to everyone. To assist them in taking the responsibility of envisioning their future self. We need to create an avenue that will maximize the success of all students and will accommodate a diverse range of skills, needs, and interests. Children are our greatest gifts and should be treated with extraordinary care. Through research, we can do that. Thank you for listening po to my presentation. Thank you po, Dr. Bernadette. Thank you for sharing your insights about research. Thank you din po, Mr. Sir Ezekiel. Sir Richard, thank you din po. Okay, yes, po. so we... Our floor is now open for queries, for questions, for clarifications. Uh, gusto niyo pong itanong sa ating mga speakers. Go ahead po. Pwede niyo po uh, i-chat sa ating chat box. 
kung possible na po silang mag-open ng camera nila para makilala rin naman yes, natin po. yung kasama natin. Anyway, question and answer na rin naman. Nag-enjoy po ako, Sir Chad. Sa lahat po nang narinig ko dahil refreshing po at syempre inspiring no? despite this pandemic and despite everything, no? tayo po ay nabibigyan ng hope and yes. uh, still we are learning from especially from this very much equipped speakers that we have here. Ako po na-realize ko na parang gusto ko yatang mag-apply sa guidance. Although baka hindi ako <laughs> pwede not because of license kasi madaldal ako baka makuwento ko kaagad yung <laughs> <laughs> mga nasabi sa akin. Ako nga rin po ang hirap din eh sir. No? Pero alam mo yun nagkakaroon ka ng grip no? dun sa mga sinishare din ng mga students na no? nakakatawa din po uh, being a career guidance designate. Uh, Siyempre, pero nandun pa rin sa full control. Pag alam kong hindi, hindi ko yun sa COP, I also ask for help din po ng mga licensed guidance counselors. And nakakatulong din siya kasi parang ikaw mismo nakakontrol mo yung sarili mo in in uh, like manner din po. Ayan. So, uh, let us have some queries. Chat lang po ninyo. Or If pwede po kasi par- direct na rin po. Baka po... Yes. Uh, Open microphones. Abala pa sa kanilang mag-chat, pwede naman nilang i-direction. Uh, si Sir Sir Ezekiel reading ready yan at saka si Doc Bernadette. Yes. Pati yung moderator po ready yan. Ayun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pero ang nababasa ko kasi dito sir mga appreciation eh. Okay. Dahil po na-appreciate po nila. Either question yung, uh, siguro or ano po, or uh, anything that they would like to say or add, maybe. Ang group sharing po, no? Si na Ma'am Maylene, o si na Ma'am... Uh, From Ma'am Lai. Ang opo. Baka may... Dis- gusto po silang i-share. Masahin ko lang yung ibang appreciation, sir. Uh, from Ma'am Lai, awesome clap for Dr. Lehard. It was brief yet concise. Ayan. Uh, from Ma'am Desa, though I came in late, gained a lot of learning. Thank you, sir, Ezekiel. Ayan. Thank you po. Thank you po. Mukhang wala po yata. Thank Sila you po. Ma'am. Hello po. Ayan, meron. Ma'am Desa. Hello po, Ma'am Desa. Hindi po ako mag mag ano mag uh, mag-open ng video kasi nakapantog na po. Ayun. <laughs> Nakapanjama na po ako ni po kagalang-gala ngayon. Uh, It's okay, Ma'am. <laughs> Ayun, um ako po I have a, a lot of uh, friends who are actually guidance counselors. Um napansin ko lang uh, one reason why uh, uh ako I, I I I usually have um I respect sa kanila. Most of them are actually vulnerable in, in terms na they are too emotional. Hindi ko lang po alam kung observation ko lang, observation ko lang po 'yon o ano. Ah, uh, totoo po ba 'yon because uh, based on what I uh, ano po, I've studied. Na minsan po you have uh, guidance counselor since uh, sila po yung nag-absorb ng lahat po ng ng emotion sa mga estudyante is na-absorb po nila yung lahat ng yon. So, uh, tanong ko lang po, um, totoo po ba yon as guidance counselor na sometimes you get too emotional uh, when it comes to certain things po? Sige po, sino po okay. mauna? Hello po. Eh, yes po, yes. Ah, <laughs> po ako. Thank you ma'am Des for that, ano po, yung question. Tama po kayo kung minsan talagang or talag, yung pong mga designates, advocates po, um, hindi po maalis yung ano eh, yung nagiging emotional ka sa, sa mga situations. Kaya lang, like po yung na-mention kanina ni Sir Ezekiel, um, kahit po na designates ka or advocates ka, alam mo pa rin po yung um, lugar mo. Yung kailangan, don't, huwag ka pong masyadong, I mean, yung attach, yung attachment sa client natin. Um, huwag mong masyadong, what, pag sinabi ko pong hindi ka attach, yung uh, baka po hanggang bahay, 
dala-dala mo yung uh, na-share ng bata o yung problema niya um, during our ano po nung kinukuha ko pa lang yung uh, sa MAGC isa sa mga sabi ng professor ko is um, basta kung ano po yung na-share sa inyo leave it there kailangan din po kasi ng mga designates mga guidance counselors designate kailangan din natin yung self care so yung pong um, kailangan i-process ng maayos and then as much as possible po yung kailangan alam mo yung uh, demarcation line yung pong hanggang saan ka lang yung lalo na yung emotions natin kung minsan hindi mo maalis po yan kailangan meron ka ring um, way kung paano mo i-release yung emotion, paano mo i-release yung um, kailangan magkaroon ka din ng uh, way to uh, maalis yung stress mo, yun, after mong nakausap yung bata po, yung client. Okay. Sir Kale? <laughs> wala po si Circle. Natakot po sa tanong. Hindi, <laughs> De, biro lang po. Thank you po, Ma'am Bernadette. Thank you so much po. Nawala po si Circle. Oh, thank you, Ma'am Bernadette. May tanong po yata sa chat box din. Yes po. From uh, ACT Dienos, Mary. ACT, Association we... of Concerned Teacher ba yun, Ma'am? Oh, I do not know. Let's ACT. clarify later. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can we help improve po the guidance services during this pandemic? Since we are now transitioning to online transactions and interactions, paano daw po may improve yung ating mga guidance services? Dahil po, wala pa po si Sir Kel, Ma'am Deb? <laughs> Opo. Um, um, ano po, uh, talaga pong yun, no? Kamukha po na mention ko kanina. Yung mga guidance services, paano nga po natin siya um, ibibigay sa mga learners natin ngayon? For example, yung pong career guidance nga, October, usually di pa marami tayong mga activities. Uh, and then meron po tayong module na sa grade 10 mer- and 12, may module na kailangan ma-accomplish. So, ngayon wala pang, so far, wala pa pong directives dun sa module kung sa career kung how will it be facilitated po, no? So, at our end po niyan, uh, tignan natin, lalo na uh, pag-opening ng school year, yung unang inaayos sa guidance ay eh, yung individual inventory. So, lalo na sa mga grade 7 and then yung mga transferees, kailangan natin yon uh, Yung mga grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, kumbaga, kung meron kayong senior yung sa grade 10, uh, mahanapin mo mga students mo tapos kumbaga i- i-update mo yung mga individual inventory mo, yung mga grade 7 naman makikipag-coordinate ko sa registrar and then um, ma- uh, ililipat mo lang sila ng, sa file mo uh, magiging grade 8 yun. Kaya lang ngayon, ang mahirap yung sa mga grade 7 uh, and also yung mga transferees, how are you going to uh, facilitate the individual inventory form? Kaya, kaya ngayon, meron po tayo yung sa Google, yung Google Forms. Uh, pwede din po natin gawin yon para siya parang i-fill out. So, makikipag-collaborate tayo sa sa mga class advisors and then ipapasagot po natin yan or uh, like kami modular so yung individual inventory form pwede po siyang ibigay sa parents tapos i-fill out na lang tapos i-check and then kung may mga missing na information then coordinate so kung titignan nyo po talagang medyo uh, ano siyang gawin Pero kailangan po eh. And another thing, isa pa sa mga services natin is yung um, interview. Okay? So usually po, magkakaroon tayo ng group 
uh, interview, individual interview. So, yan. Kaya po, siguro as a starting point, uh, di po ba nag-facilitate ng PFA yung mga task advisors? So, dun sa module 1, ang nakalagay doon, parang letter writing siya, and then si class advisor, uh, titignan niya yung mga answers ni bata, yung mga learners, kung sino yung may manifestations na stress or na burn out. And then from there, kunin natin yung information and then pwede po natin siyang uh, tawagan, phone, yun po. Uh, nasa creativity ng mga counselors po yan and designates on how we can be able to facilitate the services to our clients. Uh, Ma'am Bernadette, may, uh, just to add po, kasi magka-school magka -school po kami ni Ma'am Bernadette po. Uh, sa senior high po, I just uh, did it uh, two day, a few days ago. No? Um, ginawa ko po is nag, uh, ano ako sa Google Form, tapos uh, ang dinagay ko ang mga questions na particular is if the student is working, uh, tapos, uh, if the student is, lalo kong babae, if the student is pregnant or may family na siya. Meron po kasi kami mga students ngayon na ALS. So, may mga pinatanggap po sa amin na mga ALS students. So, nilagay ko rin po yun. And if they are living with their families, kung kasama po ba yung parents. Yung sinasabi mo, ma'am, that, doc, that, kanina po kung meron sa, kung naka-abroad ba yung parents or if they're just living with a guardian. Kasi nga po, doon din ako nagbe-base kung paano yung delivery of modules. Kasi uh, pagka matik, pagka walang, wala siyang parehas na magulang, usually, napansin ko po kasi pagka delivery ng modules, kung sino yung nandyan yung magulang, siya yung nauunang kumukuha ng modules. Pero pag walang magulang yung bata or guardian lang, o kaya kung minsan living alone, meron pong ganun eh. No? Minsan, uh, siya po yung huling nakakakuha ng modules. Ayun, yung mga ganun po. Yung tama po yung sabi po ni Ma'am Det, Dr. Det, yung Google Forms. Ayan, nandyan na po Sir Ezekiel. Go po, Sir. Go po. Yung question po kasi kanina, yung improving the guidance services during this pandemic. So how can we help improve since we are now transitioning to online transaction and interactions po? Okay. Kasi po sa ngayon, uh, we are in the new normal. No? Ang aking, ano dyan, aking uh, prinsip, sabi ko, uh, don't do things that we used to do in the old normal. Kamu ka doon sa mga modules, no? uh, masyadong, ano, eh, masyadong yung yung compliance, no? Just imagine for, no, for, for a day, how many subjects ba na mayroon ng bata sa, na, sa, sa school, no? They have about seven to eight subjects. So, ang sabi ko, uh, give yourselves health breaks, no? Pag alam na ninyo na, na parang, parang, uh, nagsawa na kayo or parang, parang, uh, nahirapan na kayo, give yourself some spaces to relax or to stretch or to do some physical activity. Kasi nakakatulong yun pag gano'n. Kasi kung ito yung eight subjects, no? imagine uh, kahit na i-follow nila yung schedule nila, still meron pa rin uh, gaps, meron pa rin talagang uh, oras na hindi nila kaya yung iba. Sa City of San Marcos, Dati kasi sa City of San Fernando, mayroong kaming uh, TV and production programs. No? Uh, just last week, pinatigil muna ng, ng superintendent because they want to, they want the learners to focus muna on the modular modality. Okay, so isa yun. Then, ang sabi pa sa amin, if you have some, ano, wag, nyong, ano, wag kayong mag-GC. Huwag niyo silang kontakin kung, hindi sila, kung wala silang mga tanong. Let them contact you. Let them message you kung may mga uh, tanong sila or queries. Doon lang para mabawasan. Kasi nga, we are in the new normal. Huwag nating ikumpara nung, nung old normal na talagang i-follow up mo. Pero ngayon, dahil nga simplified yung mga modules, self-contained, let them, let them do the modules. And then if they have some uh, questions or queries, do lang. Okay? One more thing, yung City of San Fernando, mayroon din kaming uh, 
uh, call center tutors and then na-integrate din yung uh, call center call center uh, counselors. Ibig sabihin, how many guidance teachers ba? We are almost 40 yata or 50 or 60. So we are given twice a month to spend three hours sa division cost center. So if there are some students na may mga issues, life issues or some adjustment, then we can reach out for them. So yun ang aming, yun ang aming uh, ginagawa. But sa akin, personally, sabi ko, wag natin gawin yung ginagawa natin nung old normal. Imposible yun. Walang ganon. Na? So kung ano lang yung pwede natin gawin ngayon, yun ang gagawin natin. Wag natin, don't push ourselves to the limit. Okay? So that can, that can help us in our mental health. Kasi the more you, you see uh, students no? or classmates mo na nasa, nasa social media, na, na ano kayo, na, na, na nabibigla ka din. So minimize social media use. Kaya, di ba, kaya ang, ang sabi sa amin, okay, I, I, we want you to, to know that our modality is modular and TV and radio productions, not online. Not online. Kaya nga pati yung pag-GGC muna, pinahinto yun in the meantime. Kasi nga yung mga bata, they are getting stressed. Sir, wala po kaming uh, wifi. Nag-data lang po ako. Nakiki-hotspot lang po ako sa kapitbahay namin. So how how would you how would you expect them to ano to to have online classes kaya nga we we keep telling them okay we, we are not in an online learning modality but ours is ble- uh, modular learning modality at saka tv and radio productions kung wala kayong means if you don't have gadgets if you don't have connection huwag kayong pa-stress kung ano lang inyo meron inyo yun ang gawin natin. And then let us wait for us to call. Ay, uh, we will wait for you to call us if you have some queries and and clarifications. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Ezekiel. And uh, with that, no, in as much as we want to entertain more queries, no, uh, we are very thankful kasi dun sa opportunity po that we have now. And despite that, it's already almost 9 o'clock and you, are, you have stayed with us and you have listened to our speakers with uh, anyway meaningful naman po at very much timely din naman po ang ating topic and so to award our certificates to our speakers for uh, this evening i give you back dr richard sanchez okay po uh, para po uh, kasi po naka video recording po tayo at uh, kung i share screen po sila yung mga some signatures baka po ma copy so we'll send them po uh, privately sa ating mga Lectures, maraming salamat po, uh, Dr. Bernadette Liharde, and uh, of course, Sir Ezekiel Abad Santos. Medyo nabitin ako ng konti dun kay uh, Dr. Yeah. Bernadette. So anyway, Thank po, you kasi, po. Uh, lecturer pa po natin siya sa isang uh, research topic naman itong, uh, itong mga susunod na araw. And of course po, uh, gusto ko rin pasalamatan ng ating moderator, si Ma'am Elaine. Si hindi po nagkamali si Dr. Uh, Bernadette po sa uh, pagkuha po sa inyo bilang ka-partner, katandem dito sa event na ito. So maraming maraming salamat po at uh, ang EdCore Educational Research Center po ay uh, napakaswerte na nandyan po kayo mga lectures, mga moderators at syempre po kayo pong mga kasama namin sa learning uh, journey na ito. Thank you so much po and good night po. Thank you. Thank you good night po.